What's up, Brew Crew? Welcome back to my Brew City Garden. Today is September 10th. Uh, it's beautiful. I mean, it's like 72 degrees out right now. You can see it's a little bit overcast, but uh, overall, it's a really nice day. We can really tell that fall is really starting to come in now. And, you know, if you go back to my videos in the springtime and I say, oh, this is my favorite time of year. This is my favorite time of year. We start getting into fall. It's not really my not really my favorite time of year. I uh, kind of start to get a little depressed. I don't know. I, I know it seems like some people are the, the exact opposite this time of year. A lot of people just love fall. I don't love fall that much. I really don't because it kind of reminds me that winter's coming and, you know, the, the leaves are going to fall and everything's going to kind of die off and whatnot. But we're not there yet. So it's still beautiful out here. Everything's nice and green. I'm still harvesting all kinds of good stuff out of the garden. Um, yeah, some of these plants are starting to peter out and not look so great. But overall, I mean, everything's still really good right now. So, uh, you know, it's good. So as you can see, I had my surgery back on Friday. And, uh, <laughs> you know, just for being a broken finger, I'm not sure what this big old club's all about. But whatever i guess they want to make sure everything's uh, protected well i've got a follow-up appointment tomorrow so hopefully we'll take this thing off and replace it with something smaller i don't know but uh it's good for backhanding i guess if i need to backhand somebody nice and hard it'll work out good <laughs> but otherwise that whole thing went really well um and i expect to make a full recovery so we're looking good there uh so I had a really good doctor and uh the surgery went great so i've got no complaints as far as that's concerned i went ahead and took today off another day uh my last day off i'll go back to work tomorrow and uh i just wanted to uh really i could have gone back today but i just you know i'm still taking the pain pills and just wanted to kind of just chill out i got a few things i got to take care of out here i definitely wanted to talk to you guys today so um, we'll just go back to work tomorrow and start fresh, get back on the saddle and everything will be great. I really appreciate the, uh, the kind words and, and the comments you guys left. That's really cool. That's, that's why I love this community. It's just a great, it's just a great thing. Thanks guys. I really appreciate it. So I really don't have a ton of stuff going on in the garden right now. Uh, like I said, everything's just kind of filtering down. It's teetering down. And, uh, so I'm still harvesting. I've got plenty of, uh, tomatoes still on the vine that are ripening up. I can pick a few every day, um, just a little bit here and there. So the harvesting is slowing down, but uh, it hasn't stopped by any means. And like I said, some of the um, some of the plants are looking kind of rough. And you know, I think this might be where a lot of gardeners get discouraged. They go out to their garden and they see their plants really looking pretty ragged, and and they think, oh, man, I did something wrong. But not at all. It's just it's just the way it is, guys. If your garden looks like crud in the fall it's totally normal don't get discouraged and uh remember the the several pounds of produce you've already pulled off your plants and have sitting in your house in the freezer that you've given to friends and neighbors um that's what it's all about everything comes to an end and in our gardens come to an end too it's it's totally normal um you know if you go online and look at pictures and stuff a lot of times people only post their best pictures they don't want to show the ugly stuff but everybody's got the ugly stuff so don't sweat that at all. Everybody's garden dies off. Don't worry about it. It's totally normal and there's nothing you can do about it. So since I don't have a whole lot going on out here in the garden today, I will be doing some work and we'll take a look around. But I forgot I received a package in the mail um, about a month ago even. I ordered some seeds from MI Gardener and I just wanted to come in here and take a look because I totally forgot what I even ordered. So let's check it out here. Try not to cut my club off here. Pull this open. I love getting seeds. I love getting seeds. It's like Chris. It's like Christmas. Uh oh. Oh, I cut my cut my paper. Oops. We don't need that anyway. Let's see what, see what we got. I got a lot of seeds too. I picked these up when Mi Gardener had his last sale, and I think all these are like half off something like that i'm not sure i got a really good deal on them but man i got apparently i i stocked up on the carrots i got one two three packages of these 
purple carrots. And if you've never grown these purple carrots, these things are awesome. The flavor in these things are fantastic. They might not have the, the perfect shape and form that you find in the supermarket, but the flavor in these are always just superb. Looks like I picked up some oregano, some cumin that I've never grown before. Wow, and you can really, really smell that. Of course, cilantro, more cilantro, more cilantro. I love the cilantro, guys. Uh, looks like I got a lot of herbs this time. Some sweet marjoram, parsley, sage. Here's a different one um, that I've never grown, banana melon. Um, if anybody out there has ever grown banana melon, just leave leave some comments in the link or in the uh, the comment section below, and let me know what your experience is with these, and uh, you know if you if you like them or not. I I just kind of went out on a whim; they were on sale, so I thought I'd try them. A list of Craig onions. We'll grow some onions next year. Some Kelsey onions. Uh, both those varieties are are highly regarded. Uh, some Tabasco peppers. Going to make some more hot sauce next year. I grew these Tabascos several years ago and i haven't grown them since um they they're they are very productive but they take so long to produce i remember picking these peppers last time i grew them in like in mid-september so it took a long time but they really do pump out the peppers once they get going what else we got here some golden ball turnips oh here's one i remember ordering these peanuts do you know anybody who's grown peanuts in a straw bale garden? I wonder how this is going to work out. I've never grown peanuts at all, but we're going to try these uh, probably in ground, in a bucket container, and uh, definitely in the straw bales because I want to see how well these work. And if you, if you don't know how peanuts work, they basically, they so the, the plant grows up and then it shoots these little branches or little um, like fingers back down into the soil. And that's where the actual legume grows under the soil. So it's kind of strange. It comes up, it sticks itself back under the soil and then grows these little, little peanut uh, beans. So that's, I'm looking forward to seeing how that works. And I want to make sure that the kids see that too, uh, because it, you know, it's just a strange concept to me. I'm sure a kid would get a kick out of it. Um, so we've got some of these little scallop squash, which I've never grown these either, but I, it seems like everybody I talk to that grows these loves them and they grow them year after year. So we're going to give those a try. Uh, there's a MI Gardener's um, little business card there. These guys, they really are stellar. Their, their seeds are fantastic. The amount you get in a package is great. And um, they're just really family friendly. Of course, if you know MI Gardener's you know, YouTube channel, just really good people. I love doing business with these guys. Got some more uh, Ford hook chard. And last but not least, some lemon balm. All right, so I'm gonna be itching to get these things planted next spring. And uh, maybe I'll plant some of these herbs inside in my basement garden. I do have a indoor garden lighting setup uh, that usually I only use in the spring just to get my starts going. But uh, in the interest of keeping something going through the winter time and even making videos in the winter time, I think I'll, uh, I think I'll get the indoor garden going um, and uh, we'll do some videos out of there too. We'll see how that works and see how you guys like it. It's a pretty nice setup for what it is. And uh, if it's something that you're thinking about doing, it's really a pretty easy setup to do as well. It's, it's not that difficult. A lot of people think of indoor gardening as some big feat. And really it's not, it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty easy thing to do and you can, you can uh, make your setup as big or as small as you want, um, of course, according to your space. So we'll go through that in uh, future videos and we'll get a taste of that and we'll see how that goes. All right, so you guys are probably sitting here bored watching me, <laughs> watching me talk at you. Uh, let's go out in the garden. I wanna show you a couple things I took care of in the last couple of days. It hasn't been a whole lot, but uh, I'll show you what I pulled out the, uh, the cucumbers and uh, transplanted my the peas out of my seeding trays and uh, I think we need to harvest some uh, some tobacco seeds they're not all ready but there's a bunch of uh, pods ready to be harvested and I don't want the birds eating them or have them fall all over the place and end up with a bunch of uh, wild tobacco growing in the garden next year so we'll take care of that too all right come on guys let's go let's go check it out 
So this particular trellis here is where I had my cucumbers planted originally. And uh, the cucumbers did really well, especially the, uh, the, pi the pickling cucumbers. Uh, the lemon cucumbers that I tried for the first time this year, they did okay. The plants just weren't really healthy in this environment. Uh, I did end up getting a whole bunch of lemon cucumbers and they're pretty tasty. Uh, I don't think I'll grow them again though. I'll probably just pass the rest of my seeds off to somebody who might want to grow them. So I went ahead and harvested the last of my cucumbers yesterday and I got about a half of a, a five gallon bucket load here and uh, went ahead and pulled all those vines out and got rid of them and transplanted my uh, my peas in here. Now I had planted a bunch of peas over here along my coal crops and a good portion of those did germinate and are growing just fine but I also sowed a backup tray of peas just in case and I had quite a few extras and they were starting to get kind of stringy but with the weather it was hard to get out here and actually do anything with them. Now that the weather's nice I pulled the cucumbers out and I transplanted the peas uh, yesterday and so far it looks like they're taking very well. So with any luck I can get these peas at least halfway up the trellis and get them to go to maturity and uh, we'll get those peas that everybody in this family love so much. Now that I've got the cucumber uh, vines pulled down, you can really see the uh, winter squash vines uh, from, from the other side, the opposite side that we normally see them from. And uh, they're doing really well. Now we talked about powdery mildew and the fact that I really wanted to try and stave off the powdery mildew on these vines. Unfortunately, with all the rain that we have had in the last uh, several days, it's just been impossible to come out here. I could spray them with milk and it would rain 10 minutes later and uh, just wash that milk right off. So not a whole lot I could do with uh, this uh, winter squash. This is uh, butternut squash. But with that being said, uh, they really are producing very well. I've got a nice fruit here and we've got several of these. I think I've counted about eight of these nice uh, butternut squash fruits. And I'm pretty sure we won't have any problems getting these things to maturity and uh, having a really nice harvest of long storing, long keeping butternut squash. And uh, they really are just a fantastic dish. So if we take a look at the tobacco, uh, you know, this stuff did far better than I could have ever imagined this year. Uh, this is, it's actual smoking tobacco, it's Virginia Gold, which is a really good tobacco for rolling your own cigarettes. Uh, it's very mild, uh, just a nice flavored tobacco. Now I don't smoke and I really don't have any plans to use these leaves. The reason I grew this was for this right here, the seed stock and only because I recognize the intrinsic value that these seeds could have in a situation where we had to trade or barter um, if there was some kind of fin financial type of meltdown or something like that. Um, if I were the only guy in town with tobacco, I would probably be one of the most popular guys in town. And uh, one of these little pods here can contain up to a thousand seeds. And if you look, in here there's at least a thousand or more pods so i've got more seeds than i'll ever know what to do with but with that being said let's get some of these harvested so now as i'm looking through here some of these seed heads are pretty much fully developed i mean every one of these pods have turned brown and they're beginning to split open slightly so i know these are definitely ready to be harvested and i'll just take the entire flower head off of these now, if we look in some of these other flower heads, there's still a lot of green uh, unripe pods in here. I will try to just go ahead and harvest the, the dried brown pods and leave the green ones on the vine. Not that I really need any more, but that's just good practice. So that's, that's the way I'm going to do it. So let's get some of these off of here.
So as we look on this one particular flower head, there's probably about a hundred pods on here. Uh, each pod, like I said, contains up to a thousand seeds. So that could be, this is probably anywhere from 50 to a hundred thousand seeds. That's a lot of seeds. That's a lot of tobacco. So as you can see, even one plant can really go a long way. Uh, the several plants that I put in here is probably overkill. And uh, if I didn't have the issue with my hand right now and I had more mobility, I would probably try to dry some of these leaves out and experiment a little bit with the tobacco itself. That's a lot of seeds. All right, so as I was harvesting these seed heads off the tobacco, I noticed a uh, common garden pest uh, taking home on some of these tobacco flowers. And I don't know if you can see those very well, but all these little spots here on the flower and they're all over the leaves. This flower is pretty much covered with them. And there's a few others. What you're looking at is um, actually aphids. Now, Aphids, yeah, they're a garden pest, but they're really not terrible. Of all the pests to get, aphids are pretty easy to take care of. And then essentially what I would do is come out here and just hit these with the high-powered garden hose. Not too high-powered, you don't want to damage the flowers, but just enough to knock these guys off of here. Uh, that'll kill the majority of your aphids. And uh, you can come back and hit these with like a soapy water mixture or some neem oil and that will control the aphids from here on out. I uh, just happened to notice that. I thought I'd share it with you. It's very, very common. If you see these on your plants, you know, don't, don't lose your mind over it. It's not a big deal. They're pretty easy to get rid of, but that is what they look like. As you can see, even with the cooler weather and all the rain we're having, and uh, you know, the setbacks that I'm having with the powdery mildew and my handiwork, everything looks overall pretty good for what it is. Now these seeds, as you can see, I'm going to have more than enough seeds, more than I'll ever know what to do with. I tell you what, if anybody out there is interested in some Virginia gold tobacco seeds, just get a hold of me. Um, just leave me a message in the comments below or send me an email through my uh, YouTube link or even on Facebook and uh, we'll make some arrangements. Maybe we can, uh, we can trade seeds or I can just send some out to you. I've got, I've got more than enough. Um, and as long as I grow at least a couple plants a year, I'll have more seed stock than literally than I'll ever know what to do with. Um, and these Virginia gold uh, tobacco plants are really beautiful. They're really just a nice ornamental as well as being utilitarian. And just to give you an idea, I mean, look at the size of that leaf. I wonder how many cigarettes you could roll out of that. Uh, there's a little bit that goes into the curing process and uh, to get it to be a, a nice smoke. But by my understanding, you could literally just dry this out slowly until it turns kind of a brownish color and roll it up and smoke it. And uh, it maybe a little bit harsh, but it'll definitely get the job done. And really, that's that's what it's all about anyway. So uh, don't be afraid to grow some tobacco plants. You might uh, you might just enjoy how beautiful they are and and uh, just know in the back of your mind the uh, utility that these could provide if, if necessary. All right, guys, thanks again for joining me here today at the Bruce City Garden. As always, it's a pleasure to have you guys here. I'd love to see you guys and visit with you uh, any chance I get. Uh, if you want more information, remember you can find me on Facebook at Bruce City Gardener and check out our Straw Bell Gardening Group on Facebook called the Global Straw Bell Gardeners Collective. And we're getting more and more people in there, and uh, it's really kind of a collective. Uh, I, I speak back and forth with other groups in the straw bell gardening category, and uh, you know we like to trade information and really help each other out. And that's what's great about this community is is how helpful everybody is and how friendly, and uh, it really is just a great pastime. It's it's really a wonderful thing. 
And remember, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button right there. That way you can keep up with the Brew City Garden for the rest of this season and for seasons to come. We'd love to have you here as the newest member of the Brew Crew. And if you like this video and you, you, you found something that you enjoyed with this video, hit that thumbs up button for me. That's going to help me out a lot. I really appreciate that. All right, guys, it's time for me to get out of here. We'll see you.